Hi everyone, welcome back to Glory Recap. In this video, we are going to recap and review the 2019 fantasy adventure film called The Iron Mask. Long ago, a great dragon accidentally drops his eyelashes on the ground. And the eyelashes miraculously grow into a tea plant that can cure all diseases. The efficacy of this tea then spread throughout the world, and to maintain its efficacy, the dragon entrusted people called the White Wizards to take care of his eyelashes. He also made a magic seal which he entrusted to a white wizard called the Master and his daughter the Princess. But as time went on, some wizards started to get greedy. The Black Witches led by the Two-Faced Witch took over the Dragon Cave, and they deliberately didn't cut the dragon's eyelashes, so the dragon's eyelashes became very long which finally made him fall asleep. The White Wizards tried to stop them, but the Black Wizards were too powerful, and in the end the Black Wizards exiled the Master and his daughter to a prison far from China. Years later, the Master is apparently still trapped in his exile in a white tower in England. He was imprisoned with two other people, an old man and a mysterious man wearing an iron mask. Not long after, a homing pigeon suddenly comes to their cell. The iron mask catches the bird and finds a letter. He can't read the letter at first, but the Master realizes that it is a secret code written backwards. When they read it through the reflection of the water, the letter was written by a map maker named Jonathan Green to his wife in England named Mrs. Dudley. In the letter, Jonathan shares his experience in a Russian forest, where he accidentally enters a fairyland with strange creatures he has never seen before, including an ancient god called Vai. Fortunately, he managed to get out of there and went straight to Moscow to show his map to the Russian Tsar named Peter. When Jonathan attends a banquet, he realizes that the Russian Tsar who is in front of him is not the Peter he knows. Apparently, the real Russian Tsar turns out to be a man in an iron mask who is imprisoned with the Master of the Dragon. As a result, Jonathan was immediately thrown into the dungeon so that their secret would not be revealed. Peter realizes that Jonathan must need his help, so he writes a letter using charcoal to Mrs. Dudley to tell her that her husband is imprisoned in Moscow. Peter also reveals that he is the real Russian Tsar and asks Dudley to set him free in the White Tower prison. In the following scene, the pigeon finally arrives at Dudley's palace when she is practicing firing. Dudley shows the letter to her father who is a nobleman. She asks him to free Jonathan in Moscow immediately and also a man who claims to be the Tsar of Russia. A few days later, Jonathan is finally released at the request of the British ambassador, but on the condition that he must draw a map of the East. Jonathan agrees and asks for an assistant to help him on the journey. At the same time, he sees a Chinese prisoner being whipped by the executioners. Jonathan feels sorry for him and he finally chooses the boy to be his assistant. The boy's name is Ching Lan, and Jonathan doesn't realize that the boy is actually a girl. After they leave, the royal officials secretly order the assassins to kill them. As they arrive in a forest, the assassins suddenly come and attack them. But apparently, Sun Lan is a kung fu master and she is able to beat the bandits one by one easily. In the middle of the fight, a little monster suddenly appears to help Sun Lan. The monster turns out to be from a fairy tale and was secretly hiding in Jonathan's carriage. After successfully defeating the assassins, they continue their journey to China. Jonathan sends a letter to his wife saying that he is going to China with a boy named Sunlan who has saved his life. After receiving the letter, Dudley comes to the White Tower prison to meet the Chief Warden James Hook to determine whether the Russian Tsar is currently imprisoned there. But it turns out that James is fighting with the prisoners to hone his skills, and he promises to give freedom to anyone who can beat him. Then three twin brothers from China raise their hands to accept his challenge. In that fight, one of them manages to trick James and get on top, but he refuses to go without his two brothers. James appreciates him, and he finally gives them all their freedom. After that, James escorted Dudley to Peter's cell. Dudley finally gets to meet the Russian Tsar, and she reads him a new letter from Jonathan saying that he is going east with a boy named Ching Lan. Hearing Ching Lan's name being mentioned, the master says that Ching Lan is his daughter and that he was not a boy but a girl. Dudley is very panicked and wants to catch up with Jonathan because he is traveling with a girl, but suddenly the old man dies at the same time. When two guards come to the cell to remove the old man's chains, they accidentally release the chains that are tied to the master's hands, so the master immediately takes the opportunity to escape by beating the two guards. They actually have the opportunity to escape easily, but the master instead goes to James' antique storage room to retrieve a legendary object which turns out to be the dragon seal. After getting the dragon seal he is looking for, they cut the chains that bound each other and immediately ran away. But unfortunately, James pulls the chain that is still tied to the master's hand. The master is forced to give the dragon seal to Peter and asks him to give it to his daughter. 
Peter promises to give the seal to Tsunlan, and he immediately flees on a carriage with Dudley who is waiting for him at the gate, while the master restrains James and challenges him to fight. In that fight, the master shows some of his ultimate moves and almost beats James. The master manages to make James fall, but because the chain in his hand is too long, James pulls the chain and does not give him freedom. Meanwhile, Peter and Dudley arrive at a port and plan to go to China by infiltrating a merchant ship. After learning that Peter is going to China, Dudley also wants to get on the ship so she can catch up with her husband. Then he robs a drunken man of his clothes to get on board the merchant ship disguised as a man. In the following scene, the ship has to pass through a big storm. The captain of the ship asks his crew to raise the main sail, but when the sail is raised, they are shocked to find several women's clothes hanging on the sail which means there is a woman on the ship. They immediately search for the woman in the entire cabin. Dudley tries to stay calm by pretending to be looking for the woman, but suddenly a mouse appears, making her scream in fear and accidentally take off her hat. After her cover is finally blown, the men begin to tease her and put Dudley in danger. Luckily, Peter who is in the cabin tries to protect her. At the same time the ship finally meets the big storm they had feared and forces everyone onto the decks. However, the captain of the ship disappears mysteriously, so Peter is forced to take over the steering. Peter manages to steer the ship through dozens of rocks, and they are finally able to get out of the big storm. On the following day, Peter is appointed as the new captain because they now believe he is the real Rush Azar. Meanwhile, it turns out that the captain of the ship had like a coward to save himself, and the crew immediately locked him up. On the other hand, Peter can finally remove the iron mask that has covered his face for years. Elsewhere, Jonathan and Ching Lan arrive in China after a long journey. Ching Lan thinks that her people are living in prosperity, but when she sees the soldiers beating the tea farmers, she realizes that her people are suffering and that something is wrong. When Jonathan is resting in his carriage, Ching Lan stops her disguise and decides to find out for herself what really happens in her country. After entering the city, Ching Lan realizes something is wrong because the people are selling their tea at a low price and they are required to pay the princess's tax. Shortly after, royal guards and treasurers come to collect tax money from the merchants. No one dared rebel because they have very strong magic and they manage to awaken the ancient armies that are undefeated. One of the merchants tries to trick them by giving them fake gold, but the ancient army can detect that it is fake gold. As they continue to commit atrocities against the people, the rebels suddenly appear to attack the royal army. The rebels try their best to defeat the royal army, even though it is in vain because the ancient armies are too powerful. Meanwhile, Jonathan who has just woken up, is surprised after realizing that the soldiers are bringing his carriage to the palace. Arriving at the palace, Jonathan shows the world map he made. The evil witch is amazed by Jonathan's map, and she is interested in having the map because she can trade tea not only by sea but also by land. Then she invites him to witness the dragon who will execute several rebels. At the same time, Cheng Lan can see Jonathan at the palace and realizes that he is in danger, so she immediately tells Kotai to deliver a letter to him. Cheng Lan warns him to be careful because the princess is an evil witch, and she also asks him to make a map of the palace for her. Jonathan asks the evil witch for permission to draw a map of the palace, and she gives him permission to finish it as soon as possible. Jonathan takes the opportunity to sneak into a secret room that looks like a research lab. He realizes that it turns out that what the Black Witches are doing is not magic but only science, including creating ancient armies that are actually only controlled by ordinary soldiers. However, the evil witch immediately orders the army to catch him after learning that Jonathan is spying on them. The evil witch has the idea to use Jonathan as bait so that Cheng Lan comes to save him, and after that, she will take the dragon seal from her. When the evil witch is off guard, Kotai takes advantage of the opportunity to steal the map of the palace that Jonathan has made. Meanwhile, Peter and Dudley finally arrive in China. Peter then shows the dragon seal given by the master to the merchants so he can meet the true princess. One of the boys hears their conversation, and he immediately goes to meet Ching Lan to tell him that a Russian man is looking for her. When Peter and Dudley are walking in the market, Ching Lan kidnaps Peter and takes him to a place to interrogate him. Dudley tries to save Peter but Chin Lan's men immediately put them into sacks. In the following scene, Peter explains everything to Chin Lan about what he experienced in the White Tower with her father, and he also hands over the dragon's seal to her. Shortly after, Kotai comes to hand over a map of the kingdom made by Jonathan. After getting the map, they immediately plan a strategy to carry out a rebellion against the palace through underwater caves and air attacks using Jonathan's invention. 
After all the plans and strategies have been prepared, Peter and his people go to meet the evil witch so that Ching Long and her soldiers can easily enter the palace. The evil witch invites Peter to her room, and then gives him a glass of drink that eventually makes him unconscious, while Dudley and the others are invited to witness the execution of a rebel who turns out to be Jonathan. Dudley begs forgiveness for her husband, but instead they capture her and set her up with Jonathan to be executed together by the great dragon. Meanwhile, Chen Lan and her soldiers start moving through the underwater cave to head to the tower where the dragon is. They are surprised to find out that the dragon that executed the rebels is not a real dragon but only a fake dragon that has been electrified and controlled by several soldiers. As they are about to execute Jonathan and Dudley, the Russians come in time to save them. In the middle of the fight, the captain of the ship suddenly appears and cuts all the cables that are attached to the fake dragon, and finally the dragon is destroyed. Then the civilian soldiers start flying into the palace and attacking the royal armies with pepper guns. Meanwhile, Chen Lan arrives at the cave where the great dragon is imprisoned. She puts the dragon seal which makes the dragon wake up again after sleeping for years. Because of the bond between them, the master can feel that his daughter has freed the dragon. The master releases all the chains tied to his body as if he were removing the chains that bound the dragon. Meanwhile, the Russians sneak into their lab and find the royal soldiers carrying batteries for the ancient armies. He immediately destroys the lab, and finally they are able to defeat the ancient armies easily. Realizing that she is surrounded, the evil witch tries to escape by boarding an air balloon and carrying all the gold. She thinks she has managed to escape, but suddenly Ching Lan and the dragon come to thwart her escape. They fight each other, and the evil witch tries to snatch the dragon's seal so she can control it. Two friends of the evil witch suddenly appear to help her defeat Ching Lan. Ching Lan is very confused because they all wore masks similar to her face. When the evil witch manages to wrest the dragon seal from Ching Lan's hands, she unexpectedly kicks her two friends because she no longer needs them. Shortly after, Peter and the others come to help Ching Lan, but they are confused because the dragon seal is in the witch's hands. Kotai then approaches the true princess and makes Jonathan very sure that she is the real Ching Lan. After her disguise is blown, the witch reveals her true face and orders the dragon to obey her orders. When she is off guard, Kotai then snatches the dragon seal from her hand, but the evil witch shoots her weapon which makes Kotai fall. Ching Lan then jumps into her dragon and prefers to save Kotai, even though she has to give up the dragon seal to the witch. The witch falls and tries to control the dragon, but the dragon refuses to submit to her, so she eventually falls into the sea and dies. In the following scene, Jonathan sends a letter to his father-in-law, asking him to employ all his influence in order to free the master from the White Tower as soon as possible. On the following day, James comes to the master's cell to tell him that the queen has released him with honors. The master of the dragon is finally able to return to China, and he brought James with him. Thanks for watching to the end. Don't forget to click subscribe for more movie recaps, and see you in the next video.